Tony, do you have sex with ladyboys? Uh, yeah, I have sexual relations. Are you a sex addict? I just, I really love women and I just uh, love touching them, I love looking at them. Tony, 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 <laughs> what's going on? Uh, what's your my, mom think? My mom uh, originally. Hey folks, Pete here from Tyrish Times. Fasten your seatbelts. We got a big one today. So on this channel, We've interviewed a doctor about the rate of HIV in Thailand. We've interviewed Brian from Kenya and discussed racism and discrimination in Asia. We've interviewed an entrepreneur from Belgium who set up businesses on Koh Chang, a diving school and a restaurant. But we've never interviewed someone who lives on the fringe of society, someone whose life is vastly different from everybody else's. And today we're going to talk to Tony, who openly discusses steroid use and the life of polygamy in Pattaya, Thailand. And before we start, I'd just like to acknowledge Dana from the Idea Studio, who brokered the deal and was the middleman between myself and Tony and helped this interview to happen. So thank you very much, Dana. I'd also like to say we're not far away from hitting 10,000 subscribers. We're very close. So if you like this content, please hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. It all helps me bring more interviews and more interesting content for you. And I do have a lot more interviews coming. So thanks very much. Let's get into it. Tony Huge. Yeah, Pete. How you doing? Good. I'm swell and swell. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everybody where you're from. Sacramento, California. And what are you doing in Thailand? Uh, well, my day-to-day -day schedule is like a fitness lifestyle and business stuff revolving around the chemistry about fitness and educating people. Uh, what about business? What about chemistry? Can you explain that more? I teach people a lot about research chemicals because these are chemicals that are like pharmaceutical medications that are not FDA approved, but it just happens to be that most of the chemical, most of the diseases and most of the reasons why we would use chemistry, actually they have a solution already. Like we don't need to wait for them to invent cures to diseases or new chemistry to optimize our body. They all already exist. The only reason they're not promoted is because they're not patented or they're not FDA approved. So I experiment on myself and others like underground experimentation and research. And then I learn about these supplements and drugs and I teach other people about it and then I you know teach people in the industry how to navigate it the the company that I was affiliated with in the beginning was enhanced athlete so that's this is an enhanced athlete also known as enhanced labs shirt so that's those are the foundation companies of everything and um, that's what went really famous like everybody in the fitness community everyone in the world knows what enhanced labs or enhanced athlete is because it went extremely viral on YouTube and in the fitness community before. Uh, and it was started just as education. Like it didn't, it wasn't intending to sell anything, but then it developed into a supplement company. So the start of this mission, when I retired from being a lawyer, was just to take that money and invest it into underground research, furthering the chemistry of, I call it pioneering human evolution, to optimize our body and our life in every possible way. Uh, and educate people how to use these things safely so that maybe it becomes more popular so that I can get more people out of the matrix of mainstream medicine, you know, because mainstream medicine is just to treat diseased people and to bring that up to feeling normal. It's not for making normal people feel amazing. And the chemistry is available to go from normal to amazing in every aspect of our life. I want more people to have access to that. Are steroids easy to get in Thailand? Yes. I mean, it's easy to get anywhere if you know who to talk to, but in Thailand, like you go to a lot of the pharmacies and steroids are pharmaceutical medications. And in Thailand, you can get more pharmaceutical medications without a prescription or through a pharmacist. It's kind of like a prescription when they give you the, the, the drug. And there's some major brands here like Bayer, for example, and Bayer makes steroids. You can buy Bayer steroids over the counter in the pharmacy. Is there good money in this business? So the most money in the business of fitness is in information products. Like if someone buys an ebook or something like that. So I have made ebooks, but I give them away for free for educational purposes. So the money that can be made is, let's say in the mainstream supplement world, the margins are not very big. 
um, products unless you're kind of scamming people. This is the big problem in the mainstream supplement industry. There's a lot of scam products and those companies, they make huge amounts of money. And those are the majority of the companies. The majority of supplement companies are kind of like scam companies that over promise and under deliver on their products. I was involved in the development of enhanced where we created products that are actually really effective, but that means they cost a lot more to make and the profit margins on them are not so good. So in order to actually make really good money, you need to sell a high volume of products. And coming with that is all of the expenses and liability of running a bigger supplement company as it gets bigger and bigger. So is there big money in it? Yeah, it depends on how big you grow the company and it depends how big you think big money is. I'd say in the, the supplement industry is nothing compared to crypto or many other different industries, like not even close. So if, like, if you're going for money, you don't go into the supplement industry unless you plan on scamming people or creating a monopoly. That's where the money's at. Is there a lot of steroid use in Thailand? Bodybuilders all. The thing is, they don't look down on steroids in Thailand. So, like, people who go to the gym eventually learn that steroids is what makes the bodybuilder body. And then they, they get on steroids and it's readily accessible. You know, there's so many people that just have no interest whatsoever in bodybuilding and fitness and they don't care about steroids. And that's still in Thailand. I don't think, I think there's less people interested in bodybuilding and fitness than other places. So, even though it's more accessible and more socially acceptable, you still actually have less people using it in Thailand than you do in America, just because it's less popular to bodybuild. Uh, where are you based in Thailand? Pattaya and Bangkok both. I spend most of my time in Pattaya. That okay. city was built for me. Why? I feel like someday in the future, I was a billionaire who went back in time and built this city for exactly Tony Hughes' dream town. Uh, the girls, the freedom the the culture of being very accepting I mean, as a bodybuilder we're, we're we're looked upon differently than other but in public it's something you can see instantly so people automatically judge and oftentimes that's a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing and it depends on what country in thailand generally it's a great thing and especially great in pattaya like it's really fun to be a bodybuilder in pattaya it really just fits the town the, the town is more about i'd say it's superficial but it's superficial just based on sex, not based on assets or like showing off. Like people don't drive fancy cars in Pattaya. People don't, you know, flash a lot of money. People are just more sexual. Like the girls, it's just a sexual culture because there's so much, it's pretty much the whole town is, half the town is basically red light. And that's why most people go there. That's like the world tourist attraction for, for basically sex stuff. So it's just more accepted and more respected and more desired. You know, if you go there with a physique or something, especially it's even more rare because, you know, a lot of guys will go there to get girls they wouldn't ordinarily be able to get in their own country or anywhere else. So, you know, a lot of guys will go there. They don't have a physique or they don't have, and instead they go there with money, you know, so to be able to be there and have a physique and also have money, like, you're very attractive. So let's talk about your lifestyle. Because I saw an interview on your channel and a guy interviewed you and he called you a secular polygamist. Hmm, that was the term he used. Leo, yeah. I thought that was an interesting term. Yeah. And then he went on to talk about that you have a relationship with two women at the same time. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so... We, uh, you know, I was raised to be pretty conservative by my parents and my mom and my stepdad, they're still together and they always tried to push me towards it should be one man, one woman, white picket fence, two children, like that's what you're supposed to do. But uh, it just didn't, I, maybe I chose the wrong women when I was younger also, kind of traumatic situations. You know, in Western culture, the woman has so much power and the man has so little power in everything, culturally, legally, socially. So... I, you know, I always thought I, I was like, I was never going to have a girlfriend that's my equal, really. Um, so I had girlfriends that were really like abused that power and had a lot of really negative experiences all the way up. Well, then when I was 30 years old, I came to Asia and I saw the difference. I saw like, oh, wow, I'm actually like respected here as a man, not like looked down upon for masculinity. 
That's what it is. It's like it's all this masculinity shaming and masculine toxicity. It's very America is like extremely anti-masculinity, and then Asia and the rest of the world is actually just balanced. It's not pro-masculinity, I don't think. In my opinion, maybe the Middle East is, but these countries are just it's just balanced. So I just like the balance. Uh, now, for me, there's a lot of reasons why I went towards polygamy as far as having more than one woman. One is I could never find one woman that was like everything that I wanted. So I was like, do I, do I get a girl that's not everything I wanted? And then I train her, you know, to, to like the things I like or be good at the things I'm good at or whatever. And then I would, I would have girlfriends that I invest a lot of time into them. And it, it just, it wasn't, it was like too much me trying to change them. I don't want to try to change people. They didn't, they don't want it for themselves. Most people don't want to, you know, go to the levels that I want to go to in life. Um, so I figured I'd just get a girlfriend for each purpose. Like one girl's really good at being social and going out. Okay. Then I have a girlfriend that I go out with and she's, and then I can do, I can express that interest with her. Maybe another girl is really good at going to the gym. And so that's the girl I want to go to the gym with. Another girl is like really romantic at home. I mean, like the, one of the best girlfriends I ever had, uh, who was bisexual and we'd bring girls home together. And it was like the perfect relationship. Cause why would I ever cheat? Like if she's bringing girls home to me, I would never, I would never get bored and I would never cheat. And so I could actually be with her with that. But we actually broke up probably mostly because she didn't want to be romantic. So like I wanted to have quiet romantic time. Like that was important to me. So I would still actually in the end have to go with another girl to get that need satisfied. She wasn't willing to compromise on that. So like, why should I compromise and, and not do the things I want to do to be stuck with one woman? Why not just have multiple women? And then it does take time for me to train the women because I'm pretty particular about everything. So why would I in, date a girl for a short period of time. And then like, just as she's learning how to adapt to me, then I dump her. And then I start with a new girl, like serial monogamy. That's what a lot of my friends would do. Like most of my friends, it's like three month relationships and then it ends. And it's like investing time in someone and learning each other, but then they're gone. So I figured, and this is long ago, back when I was in America, I figured why not develop long-term relationships with multiple women and run them simultaneously at the same time so I get all my needs satisfied, so I don't have to compromise on anything, and so I don't get bored, and I could actually stay with this group of women. And then I thought, okay, instead of having a different woman every night, because in America I would have a Monday girlfriend, a Tuesday girlfriend, a Wednesday girlfriend, and so on, I would, I would prefer just all live in one household together. And the girls be friends and they entertain themselves and they're constructive together. And I have no problem like providing for this environment. But then now where I am at right now is I still have all these separate girlfriends and some of the girlfriends, we have threesomes with other girls. So that's like part of the fun, but it's not really like a relationship like I want. So my goal is still to have a polygamous or polyamorous relationship where it's me with multiple women all living together as a team. And it just keeps falling apart because the girls like to, they just get dramatic and they just fight with each other. I mean, you'd think this is obvious, right? You think like, of course, that's not going to work. Women are always going to be dramatic and get jealous and get fight. Well, I'm an optimist and maybe a, a vis delusional visionary. And in my mind, I can see it so clearly working because I have gotten close to it before. There's times when I've had, like right before I went back to the U.S. four months ago, five, six months ago, I had two girls living with me in a perfect relationship with all three of us. And the girls didn't want to play with each other without me. But when I'm there, we'd all play together. So every time we play, we all play together. Oh, if one girl goes out to get groceries, I can be with one girl. It's not like I can only be with them together. And they work together as a team. So like they both massage me at the same time. Or one would massage me while one's making dinner. One's cleaning while one's cooking. One's going out to get groceries while the other one's cooking dinner. You know, they're like really like, like a team really helpful, really amazing. I felt like a king. It was everything I wanted. And then I leave. And then the girls within, within one week, the girls are fighting with each other over status. Like who's in charge. I should have left them with like instructions, like you're in charge, <laughs> but I just don't think it works with women. I think there's a hierarchy thing in their brain. They have to know what their status is. And when I'm there, I can say, this is the hierarchy. And when I'm gone, I can't enforce it. They fight with each other and I come back and now they're not friends. Now they don't even want to talk to each other. So I got close. Do you have kids with these women? Yeah, I have kids with two. 
Uh, the two are Filipinos, not Thais. So one is a Philippine American citizen. She's living here in Thailand. And the other one's a Philippines citizen. She's living in the Philippines. And I had them all together for the holidays. So for Christmas, New Year's time, I had both baby mamas uh, with both of my daughters playing together. And it was wonderful. And I was like, if they could just get along, I would be so happy if my two baby mamas would live together. My two daughters could play together. Everybody, But again, they get jealous of each other and they can't. But you also have Thai women that you see as well. When I'm in Pattaya, I sleep maybe six nights a week with baby mama. And then I wake up to see my daughter in the morning. During the daytime, I'm with usually one of my Thai girlfriends, like the same one. Her nickname, Cat, Cat Lady, because she's obsessed with cats. That's like how my audience knows her. And then before that, before her, it was werewolf, because when she gets drunk and angry and she has her claws, she becomes very aggressive, like a werewolf. So those are the two main characters. And then I have all these girls. Those are the ones that I would see every day. Uh, and then I have these other girls that I see like once a week. So like those girls are committed to me. Baby mama's committed to me. Baby mama too is committed to me. This is in Pattaya. And then in Bangkok, I have a girlfriend that stays here, doesn't come to Pattaya. And then I bring up one of my girlfriends from Pattaya. So that way in the daytime, I'm with the Thai girl. And at the nighttime, I'm with my uh, American girlfriend. And do you financially support these women? Um, the American girl, no, she actually pays for everything. So if anything, she supports me, so that's it, which is nice. That's one of the reasons why I like the difference. I actually have a couple American girlfriends that like, if we go to dinner, they pay for everything. If we travel, they pay the travel expenses. Not that I couldn't, but it's just like, wow, it's nice to have the role, role reversal. It feels good. The Filipino baby mamas are dependent on me and I support them and my daughters, I support them. And then the other girlfriends, like, yeah, I so said like one girl, I see her twice a week and it's not like I pay her for sex every time, but it's kind of like I'm paying for her time. I like that arrangement because I don't want to take on, it's not like I want to have 10 girlfriends and pay for all these girls and be responsible for all these girls because it's not just financial. It's also emotional. It's also sexual. Like this one girl in Thailand, she wants sex all the time. Like I can't have sex with her as much as she wants to have sex, especially since I have to satisfy these other women that I have. So I'm totally fine with her having sex with other men. And I also don't want to support her fully. I don't want to pay her 500 or a thousand dollars a month. I just want to pay her maybe a couple hundred bucks a month. So go have sex with other men, get your, get, you know, more sex than I can give you and get enough money to cover your expenses. And it's like, we share the girl. Tony, this is like, this is hardcore stuff. This is, I've never met anyone like you before. Uh. <laughs> so like the big question I'm having, what's rolling around in my mind is, are you like, are you a sex addict? Baby mama one says I'm a sex addict. Like she wants me to go get professional help, but I don't think so because I know I have friends that are sex addicts. And, uh, for me, it's not so much like the sex, the orgasm, but there is something about like the affection, uh, something about like, I just, I really love women and I just, uh, love touching them. I love looking at them. So it's not a sex addict. It's like, it's like a woman addict almost. Like I get a lot of pleasure. If I go sit in one of these bars that I don't drink alcohol, but I'll go sit in one of the bars and get attention from the women and flirt with the women. Like, I love that. That's to me, that's, that's as good as a lot of the parts of the actual sex part. So, uh, and when I'm happiest too, is not like, it's not necessarily during the sex. It's like the, it's like the, the opposite of jealousy. I'm, I'm so, I hate jealousy so much because I've experienced it. I was an obsessive boyfriend stalker when I was younger and I was obsessed with whether my girlfriend cheated on me type thing when I was younger. And like now I just don't care at all. So it's like the pendulum just swung so far the other way because I, I've been to the other extreme and I don't want it. And I've had girlfriends that were so extremely jealous of me. It's like, I just don't want that. So it's not the sex so much as it, is the lack of jealousy, the affection, and just the love and being open and connected with multiple women. Tony, are you fulfilled or are you like searching for something that you're never going to find, but you're going to keep searching for? That's what it looks like to me. Well, I think sometimes like, should I actually cut 
all the girlfriends I have so that it frees up space so I could actually find the perfect girl because maybe that's what would be fulfilling. I'm of course with myself. I'm, I'm fulfilled with myself as far as I've got plenty of work to do, plenty of things to learn, plenty to focus on. But it's like after I've handled myself, okay, now the next level level of fulfillment of like sharing my life with someone else and connecting with someone else. I just can't find that one person that can hold all of my attention. What do you say to people who think they have the moral high ground and see your lifestyle as unethical? That is an extremely limiting belief. Anytime you base something on morality, I mean, there's different things like what's good for what's really good for humanity. That's something we could really people could really talk about. But when you base it on like religion, almost, um, which is fine, people can adopt a religion and live by those rules. And you can put yourself in that box and it's safe because you know exactly what to look forward to and what you're supposed to do under situations. And life is just simpler that way. People who are living just within a certain code are limiting their perspective and experiences and I think my, my biggest hobby is probably, I call it perspective shifting. So like I see the world through my perspective, but one of the reasons I like to date multiple women is it's, it's, it's hard to see something completely from someone else's perspective unless you get really intimate with them. And you can like even a man and a man, we can get kind of more, not sexual, but kind of more intimate to each other to where we really start to understand each other's perspective. And it takes, it takes time to develop that. Uh, and with a woman, it's easier when you're in a sexual relationship and you're intimate, you can, and you pay really close attention. You can really start sort of trying to see what the world's like through her eyes. And it's very different. Uh, and, and, and when you do that, it's like traveling the same experience of leaving America and coming to Thailand where everything looks different. You can have that by staying in your same geographical location. Some cultures say you can't eat pork. You can't eat beef. You can't, you, you have to be married, you know, or you, you're supposed to have multiple wives. Like there's all these different cultures in the world to say what's moral and which one of these cultures is right. They all think they're right. If, if I just limited myself by morality, like these people who are saying what I'm doing is mora- immoral. And so they're never even going to consider it or even try to see my perspective. Then they're going to be stuck on like this video game of life on level one. Like they're never even going to get to level two. Tony. Do you have sex with lady boys? <laughs> Depends how you define sex. I'm a lawyer, right? So we we that's how we answer things. Uh, I plead the fifth. That's also another way we answer things. Uh, yeah, I have sexual relations. That's a more broad term. Okay, the lady boys because they try harder at being a female. They work harder than most women do at being a woman. They're better at it. So like, I love women. And if a man wants to be a better woman than a, than the standard woman, okay, I will entertain that. Show me what you've, what you're working with there. And then they also, because they were a man, they also understand the man's psychology more and the man's anatomy more. So here you have like a woman who's better at a woman, better at being a woman than most women who understand my anatomy and understand my psychology. And so if they really want to seduce me, they're more effective at it than most women can be at it. But I really like the flirting and the intimacy. And uh, also when I go get a massage in Thailand, I love getting massages. That's one of the things I love about bodybuilding. Muscles get sore. You get a massage. It feels so good. And a lady boy is stronger and she knows your anatomy. She knows how to massage you really good and get also you really excited for like a happy ending massage. Happy ending massage from a lady boy. Amazing. Fantastic. Wonderful. I don't feel, I don't feel gay at all for doing it. To me, she's a woman. She's a beautiful woman who's very strong, very good at massage and knows how to give me a really good massage and finish me really well. I have I just don't see how that's gay. I feel like I want to go back to America, nothing against gay either, but I just want to be really clear. Like I like lady boys, but I'm not gay. Like there's a difference. And when I'm in the U S like we have lady boys, but you know, we, we would say more like transvestites, right? Trans woman, all that. And like, they're usually a lot more masculine. 
So this, this would be confusing to men in America too, because we're like, no, obviously if you like trannies, you're gay because it's definitely still a dude. I'm like, no, in Thailand, it's very different. They're very feminine. So I like femininity. I don't like, I like masculinity with guy friends, like to be masculine guy friends. But like when it comes to a woman, I like the, I like a woman to be really feminine and sometimes men are better at being feminine women than women, especially like men in Thailand are better at being women than most American women are at being women. Tony, you're a madman. <laughs> so Tony, I think we need to just say in the interview that like, like you said, this is the interview about your perspective in, in life and your experiences. Cause I've lived a totally different life to you. I mean, I'm a married man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, one thing I told you, I was here for 11 years. Um, I'm not a big drinker, but I never really got involved in the whole bar scene or nightlife scene. Mm. Um, I was in the gym. I like to go exercise in the gym. I've never been too focused on trying to get big or I always try to keep stay healthy. Um, I always thought Pattaya was a bit crazy. I always stayed away from it. Uh, it was just different experience. I didn't want to, I think I want to just say it for the video that we all have different experiences. <laughs> yeah, and you don't I, want to make it look like all of guys in Thailand came here to live this well, lifestyle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, this is your lifestyle and your choices. Yeah. And that's why we're doing this interview. But I just want to make it clear for the camera that everyone yeah. has different, uh, everyone's different. And, yeah. And the path that I went is just different from you. I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm right. It's just, I want to say it for the camera that that's just the way it is. My life was different in America than most Americans also. So like I, myself differently, has been, myself specifically has been very different from the standard way to approach what anything in relationship. What was life like for you growing up? I had divorced parents and my mom and my stepdad were more like Italian family style, like very family oriented, uh, always had a big garden, always grew up in sort of high class, nice houses, nice cars, this type of stuff. And they had good money, lived in a good community. But then my dad's side of the family had a lot more money. And they were more about business and more about building the empire and a little bit more stoic, less loving, less affectionate. So I, I had a good mix of like stoicism and business uh, priority versus like family and enjoying life. Both really good families. My dad divorced my mom at a young age, remarried had my step, had my half brother and then divorced and then dated. So I did as a, when I was younger in my teenage years, I did watch my date, dad date many women. Maybe that had an impact on it also. Maybe the fact that my mom, I feel like is so amazing. I could never, how could I ever find a woman that could stack up to her? So on the one hand, it's like, I see my stepdad with my mom in a committed relationship, monogamous long-term relationship but she's so amazing. Like I can understand him being with one woman. And then I never found a woman like my mom. So maybe she set the standard too high. And then I watched my dad just running through women and dating multiple women and different women showing up at the house, you know, in my teenage years. And I see that side of it too. And I, and I saw the same thing. Like with my dad, he, uh, you know, one woman would be, would like water skiing. So he would bring one girl water skiing with us. You know, one woman was a good cook. So she would come over and cook dinner. So like there was benefits of each different, that each different women, woman brought. So I did see that benefit also. What would your mother think of, well, what, what does she think of this lifestyle? Cause I can, I can imagine now my Irish Catholic mother is watching this interview and she's saying, Tony, 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 what's going on? Uh, what's your my, mom think? My mom uh, originally really hated it. And my stepdad really hated it too. And I, you know, I would get lectured sometimes, but they're also careful because they don't want to alienate me. So like anytime they feel like they can get away with telling me that what I'm doing is like wrong or not optimal, f uh, they will, they would. But now they've backed off. Now, after seeing it for long enough, they, they understand the perspective. Now they get it. But I do have two daughters and they do wish that I would like be a normal family guy for the daughters also. But they also know it's just not possible because like the baby mamas that I chose, like neither of them can keep up with me in any way. You know, unfortunately I, I, at the time I thought, okay, just 
the first daughter wasn't planned at all. So that, that was, there was no planning. But then the second daughter, it was like, I'm going to pick a girl that's, I'm up here, she's down here. And that's okay. People have different statuses and different amount of work they want to put into their life. And I will provide for her. It's cheaper to provide for people here. It's cheaper. It don't cost me much money. I can have a family, a peaceful family. I don't need her to be complicated or think about business. I just need her to be a mom. But the problem is then like I can only spend so much time with her before I get bored because there's no intellectual stimulation. And to me, I can, she's lazy. I consider her lazy compared to me because I'm always productive, always active, always learning. And like, she's just wants to just exist, you know, on a day to day basis. She doesn't even think about what tomorrow brings. She doesn't plan for tomorrow. She's just living moment by moment. And that's a different style. So I think my parents understand that I can't really be like in a monogamous relationship with either one of these women because I will be so unfulfilled. You know, some of the relationships I have are really long-term relationships. Like the girlfriend I have here in Bangkok with me from America, 11 years. It's a long-term relationship. So like, it's a serious, loving relationship. And what does she think about what you're doing? She just doesn't want to know. That's different. All, the other girls all know. The other girls all watch my content, the YouTube video. They know the other girls. They'd recognize them on the street. Uh, they, we'd even have threesomes together between some of the same girls and all that. You know, that's what I'm, I always, my goal. So it happens sometimes. Uh, but it, she just doesn't want to know. I mean, I'll give you one example. There's only one time she ever confronted me with something that she saw. So I had, uh, in Sacramento, I had her, I had this girlfriend coming over frequently. And then I had another girlfriend living with me full time. And she was okay with the other girl living with me full time. This, so this 11 year girlfriend was okay with this other girlfriend living all the time. She drew the line where the other girl started wearing lingerie around the house when we're both there because like she's being way more seductive and like getting my attention and I can't help but looking. So like she's seen this situation. She's seen other girls walk out of my room when she comes over. And basically in the end, she's like, look, I don't want to know what you do when you're not with me. All that matters, this is her philosophy, and this is why I'm still with her after 11 years, because actually her perspective, when we're talking about perspective shifting, her perspective is the most loving and happiness, fulfilled perspective I've ever known of any human being. And she's really capable of living in the moment. So when I'm with her, nothing else matters. Nothing else in my life matters other than the moment that we have together. It's so beautiful. We both love to spend a certain amount of time with each other. And after that, we get burned out. And, and we've learned that after 11 years that we could probably continue this relationship the rest of our life. So long as we spend a limited amount of time with each other. And that's just the type of relationship we're going to have. And I have this need for female attention and I want to experience more things with more females. And she's okay with that, as long as it's not rubbed in her face. Tony, <laughs> we'll leave it there. Okay. Thanks very much for, for sharing your story. All right. I'm sure the comment section is going to blow up on this one. Yeah, it's an interesting, <laughs> different perspective. I mean, I'd say to people, if you think I'm crazy now, and I could talk about this stuff for days, so just imagine there's like a lot more I could share about it. Just wait another 10 years, watch the video again, and tell me if you think I'm crazy or if you've started seeing my perspective better and think that maybe if you've gone through more experiences that my perspective, not as something that you want for yourself, but makes more sense to you than it does now. Okay, we'll finish it on there. All right, Pete. Thanks very much, Tony. <laughs>